Hey guys, it's Rishi once again, and today we're back with writing and expression. Now in this video, you'll be learning how to write algebraic expressions in under 15 minutes. So let's go ahead and jump into this right away. So with that being said, let's get started. So what are writing expressions? Well, letters can be used to stand for unknown values or values that can change. And formulas can be written and equations solved in a range of problems in both maths, science and engineering. So in algebra, letters are used, like I said, to stand for values, right? And these values can change. So let's take a look at a term and what a term is. So a term is a number or a letter on its own, which could be minus two, 3x or 5a squared. And please note, if it has both a letter and a number, that means that it will be multiplied together, which means 3x is three times by x. And 5a squared is five multiplied by a squared. So now we know what a term is. Let's now focus on an expression. So an expression is a set of terms combined using the operations add, subtract, multiply, or divide. For example, we could have 4x minus 3, or x squared minus xy. So as you can see, it's a set of terms being put together. And then we have an identity. An identity is a simple statement that is true no matter what. So for example, we could say 4a multiplied by a squared is 4a cubed. So that is again a statement that is true no matter what. We have two a's here and a third a here, hence it's a cubed. And don't forget that an equation states that two expressions are equal in value. For example, if we have 4b, minus 2 equals 6, because it has an equal sign, that makes it an equation. So I hope that is clear, and I hope you now understand what a term is, an expression, and an identity. Let's quickly take this further, and let's jump into a quick example before we start the 10-minute timer. So pens are sold in packs of 6. And rulers are sold in packs of 10. And a teacher buys P packs of pence and R boxes of rulers. Now we need to write an expression for the total number of pens and rulers bought. So we know that there are six pens in each pack. So the number of pens bought will be six times p, right? Because again, that's p packs. And we know that there's six pens in each pack. So six times p, which you can say is six p. And there are 10 rulers in each box. So the number of rulers bought is 10 times r, which is the same as 10 r. So the number of pens and rulers bought is going to be 6p, so the number of pens and rulers bought is going to be 6p plus 10r, and there we are. So I hope that example was clear. Let's go through it once more. So we have pens that are sold in packs of 6 and rulers sold in packs of 10. A teacher buys p packs of pens and r boxes of rulers. So we have to write an expression. So we need to express the total number of pens and rulers bought. So with the information we have, we know that there are six pens in each pack. So the number of pens are going to be six times P and for the rulers, 10 times R. And if we put that together, we now know it's six P plus 10 R. With that being said, let's now go ahead and go through one more example. Okay. And I'm going to use my rectangle here. So, the width of the rectangle is x centimeters. 
and the height is three centimeters less than the width, which means we'll have x minus three. So we need to write an expression for the perimeter of the rectangle. So again, if we look at the perimeter, we know that we would need to add all of our sides. So if we take a look at the perimeter, that is found by adding together the lengths of the sides of that shape. And the width of the rectangle is given as x. And as you can see, that the height is x minus three because it is three less. So now let's go ahead and label all of our sides. So all we now need to do is go ahead and add up all of the sides to calculate our perimeter. So again, we have our top and bottom. So we'll have, so we'll have x plus x, that is your top and bottom done. We'll then have x minus three from the left and x minus three from the right. And now all we need to do is add these up. We've got one x, two x, three x, and four x. And minus three and minus three gives us minus six. And that is our answer. The perimeter of this shape is four x minus six. So I hope this was a clear introduction into writing an expression. Let's now start our counter for 10 minutes and let's begin. So an adult cinema ticket costs X pounds and the price of a child's ticket is half the price of an adult ticket. So if an adult equals X, then a child must equal X divided by two. So instantly, when we're looking for an expression of the child's ticket, we know it is half of the adults. So we can simply write X over two. Marvelous work. Okay, let's move over to question two. Charles has M marbles and Rosalind has six more marbles than Charles. So write an expression for the number of marbles Rosalind has. So if Charles has M and Rosalind has six more, we can simply write M plus six. So I hope you're getting a hang of this. Let's go for number three. A cup of tea costs T pounds, and a cup of coffee costs C pounds. So now we need five cups of tea and four cups of coffee. So we'll then go ahead and write out five T plus four C, and we are good to go, because that is five cups of tea and four cups of coffee. So again, the T stands for tea and C stands for coffee. Beautiful. Question four. So Albert is given N sweets. So N can be any number of sweets. And he eats five of the sweets. So write an expression for the number of sweets that Albert now has. Well, we know he had N before. And if he's eaten five, we can just simply write N minus five. So now we know that that is the number of sweets he would have. We still don't know what n equals, so we can just simply write it down as n minus 5. Okay, question number 5. Michael is paid x pounds for each hour he works. And in one week, he works for 20 hours. So let's write an expression for the total amount that Michael is paid. Well, if x equals 1, and we need to find out the value of 20, as you know, we simply times it by 20, and we can do the same to both sides. So that will give us 20x, and that is our answer. 20x pounds. Question six. Alex has B bags of marbles, and each bag contains M marbles. So write an expression in terms of B and M for the total number of marbles Alex has. So remember now, B bags could be any number. And M marbles could also be any number. So he could have three bags of five marbles in each one, which means if there's three bags and there's five marbles in each bag, you simply times it to get 15. So what we are going to do is simply write B and M. And that is because if you remember with an expression, if you put two letters together, that means you multiply them. So BM means B multiplied by M. Okay, question seven. 
A train takes T minutes to get from London to Canterbury. The same journey by car takes 50 minutes longer. So write an expression for the amount of time it takes. So we know we'll start off with T minutes and it takes 15 minutes longer. So we just need to simply add 50 to this. And there we are. That is now an expression to get from London to Canterbury by car. And that again is your total time from your train and your car. Okay, question eight. You're doing really well by coming this far, so let's keep it up. A school charges five pounds for tickets to a show and the school raises X pounds in total from ticket sales. So write an expression for the total number of tickets sold by the school. Wonderful. So for this particular question, we need to do the inverse which means we'll get the total number raised, which in this case is X, and we'll divide that by the price of one ticket, which is five. And that there would allow us to find out the total number of tickets sold. So what have we done? We've done the amount raised divided by one ticket. And that will give us the amount sold. Okay, so let's say we had a hundred pounds raised. We've divided that by five pounds. So now we know there were 20 tickets sold. So I hope that was clear. Let's now move over to question nine. Isaac is X years old and Mary is twice as old as Isaac. So if Isaac is X, twice as old is going to be two X. So write an expression and there we are. In question 10, apples cost 30p each. And if we write an expression for the cost of A apples, we could simply say 30A, where A can be any number. So if A equals 3, we'll have 30 times by 3, and that's 90p for 3 apples. Beautiful. Okay, question 11. Steve is N years old. And Rachel is 10 years older than Steve. So write an expression for Rachel's age. So again, we'll have Steve plus Rachel, and that's n plus 10. But now it states that Tim is 13 years younger than Steve. So if Steve is n, minus 13 would represent Tim's age. And then finally, he asks us for the total age of Steve, Rachel, and Tim. So Steve was n. Rachel was n plus 10, and Tim was n minus 13. So again, we have 1, 2, and 3n, and then 10 take away 13 is minus 3, and that gives us our total expression. Alrighty, we're almost reaching the 10 minute mark. I hope you're feeling confident in this specific topic. So let's go ahead and give you these two questions to attempt. And that's my 10 minutes up, and then we will go through the solutions. Okay, so we're on to our next question here, question 12. Tea bags are sold in small boxes and large boxes. There are 100 tea bags in a small box and 240 in a large box. And May buys X small and Y large. So let's put that into an expression. So we'll have 100t multiplied by x plus 240t bags multiplied by y, and that is our expression done. I'm now going to hand it over to you. So press pause, attempt question 13 and 14, and we're going to go through it right away. Marvellous. Let's go through this. So we've got a rugby union team which has five points for each try, two points for a conversion and three points for a penalty. So let's write an expression for the total number of points. So again we'll go for five tries plus two conversion plus three penalties. And there we are. And that's all putting it together in one expression. 
Okay, question 14. Apples cost 25p and bananas cost 20p. So let's find out the total cost of A apples and B apples. And we know it equals C. So we'll have C equals, which equals 25A plus 20B. And that is your formula for the total cost of A apples and B bananas. Alrighty. And our last two questions now. So once again, let's go ahead and pause the video, attempt these questions, and then we'll go through it together. Okay, marvellous, 15A. So a child's ticket to see a show costs X pounds, and an adult's ticket costs five pound more. So instantly, we know the total expression for this will be X plus five. And for part B, let's write an expression for the cost of one adult's ticket and two children's ticket. So if we know an adult's ticket is X plus five, two children's ticket will be two X because a child's ticket is X pounds. So all we need to do is put that together and that gives us three X plus five, and there we are, marvellous. Okay, over to the final question. So a shop sells toilet rolls in small packs and big packs. There's a four toilet roll pack and a nine toilet roll pack. And the shop sells small packs and big packs of these toilet rolls. So let's write an expression for the total number of packs. Well, simply let's take the S from the small and B from the big, as it's given us here. And we can simply write down that that is going to be S plus B, where S is the small pack and B is the large pack. And then for part B, which I think was hidden, let's write an expression for the total number of toilet rolls the shop has. So we'll take our four small plus nine big. So now we know whichever number of toilet rolls somebody purchases, this is the best way to calculate it. Marvellous. And that there brings us to the end of our video. So I hope it's been super useful understanding what algebraic expressions are. We've gone through what a term is, what an expression is, and what an identity is. We've then given you two examples. The first example was around pens and rulers, and the second example was around a perimeter of a rectangle. And remember, we've also gone through simplifying expressions where we've collected like terms to simplify them in which the variables are the same. One top tip to give is that if there is only one of the letter, like for example, 5p take away 4p, do not write the one. A letter on its own means that there is only one of them. For example, 5p take away 4p will give us p. Well, with that in mind, I hope it's been super useful and I hope you can get a quick idea of how to work with expressions. So keep up the great work and I'll see you in the next video.